Hi, this is Darren Douglas from PostgresCourse.com, and today is January 7th, 2016. Why is that important if you're a Postgres user? Well, today, an exciting announcement, Postgres 9.5 has been released. So what we're going to share with you today is a quick tutorial on how to do a major version upgrade with Postgres. Uh, there's five steps here, but you may wonder why is a major version upgrade more complicated than a minor version upgrade, and then how do I know which is which? Well, to put it simply, a major version upgrade is any time we're upgrading from one version to another where the first two digits of the version number are different. So 9.4 to 9.5 would be considered a major version upgrade. If I was going 944 to 945, if there was one, well then, uh, that would be considered a minor version upgrade. And all I would have to do is to reinstall my binaries, leave everything where it is in the same data directories, and everything will be fine. Why is it different from a major version upgrade like we're going to do today, 944 to 95? Well, the difference is is the Postgres community and the way that the developers in Postgres work is changes to data file structures are only allowed during major version upgrades. So what that means is that within a major version, any 9.4x database, the data files will be compatible forward and backwards. And the same will be true of this initial version of 9.5, 9.5.0, and all subsequent versions, the data files will be compatible forwards and backwards. However, going from 9.4 to 9.5, there can be and there have been changes that cause us to need to convert our data so that data structures are uh, correct for the version in which that data is installed. All right, so that's why we have a few more steps. So here are the steps. Number one, we take a logical backup of the database. Number two, as a fail safe, we stop our cluster and we also do a file system backup. That gives me the confidence that at any point I could just take that data directory, drop it back into a brand new installation of the previous version, and I'm good to go. Number three, we're going to install the new cluster and new binaries. Number four, we're going to do a logical backup restoration. That will be the step where the data is converted. And then finally, we'll test it and make sure that all our data looks good. So let's take a look at what I currently have installed here. So if you take a look at my current installation, I have this database called Baltimore. So if I use the Baltimore database and take a look at directory listings, you see the employees directory. So let me see what employees table rather looks like. There we go, a bunch of information about different employees, their title, uh, different ID numbers and salary and so on. All right, so that's what I expect to be inside that Baltimore database. So I am going to upgrade this Postgres installation. Incidentally, when you connect, you see it says we're on uh, 944. So I'm gonna update this installation to 955. So remember those steps that I shared with you. Number one, I need to take a logical backup. So let me do that. So I'll use my PG dump utility. It would help if I spelled Baltimore correctly, all right? And now I have a Baltimore backup.sql file. Let me just do a quick sanity check on it, make sure that the size looks right. It looks about right. And let me just take a look at the contents. Remember our logical backup files are just a bunch of SQL statements. So they should be human readable. So that looks good. All right, so my Baltimore database has been backed up. What's my next step? Well, my next step is to stop my Postgres cluster and do a file system backup just as a fail safe to make sure that if I want to get back to any 9.4 version, I have everything that comprises my cluster right here in a safe file system backup. So let me show you how we do that. I'm going to go ahead and stop Postgres. All 
All right, so my server shut down. I'm going to elevate my permissions and I'm going to show you where my data directory resides. This is something extremely important. So on my system, this may not be the path on your system, but on my system, Postgres was installed in OPT Postgres 9.4 and my data directory was installed here in data. Notice all my important configuration files and all my important system libraries are located right here. Okay, so if I can back up this entire directory, then at any point I'll be able to bring my cluster back like nothing happened. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and exit that account. And then I'm gonna elevate my permissions, and do an archive copy to retain, to retain file ownership and everything of that directory to my local directory. So now I have a file system backup of the data directory. Now I'm just going to rename it just so I know what it is. All right. So steps one and two are complete, right? So step three is I install my new cluster that includes all the new binaries just to make the demo easy and make it so anybody can follow this on any particular version of Linux. I'm going to go ahead and use the Postgres, uh, installer from enterprise db so elevate my permissions and do that to execute the installer i'll select the default installation directory default data directory set my password allow the default port and default locale and install Now what's nice is the installer will go ahead and automatically start my new Postgres cluster. So now I have Postgres 9.5 installed here. So what's my next step? Now that I have the new cluster installed, I need to restore my logical backup. Okay, so let's install that backup. Let's go ahead and log into the new cluster. Let's see if that database is there. Of course it's not because it has a brand new data directory, brand new binaries, everything's fresh, just like a brand new install. It does not have any of my existing data. All right, so the first step I need to do is I just need to go ahead and create a database to hold that Baltimore data. Now there's the Baltimore database. I need to connect to the Baltimore database. And there we go. So now if I'm going to restore this logical backup, I can use the built-in command backslash I to read in a file. So what's going to happen now is that logical backup I did from version 9.4 is going to be read in using the 9.5 psql interactive terminal. And if any conversion is needed, uh, in how that data is stored, it'll be happening now because it's just a logical import of data going into the new files with the new file format, new data structures, if there are any necessary for my data types here in 9.5. So let me read in that Baltimore backup. Let's do a backslash D to see if it created that table. It did. Let's see what the data in that table looks like, see if it looks right. Looks like the same data. So those are our five steps. Do a logical backup. Stop the cluster. Do a file system backup just in case of your data directory. Install a new cluster. Restore the logical backup and do a test. Now there are other options. You could do a streaming conversion. You could set up two different clusters. One with the old version and one with the new version and stream the data from one to the other. That's one way to do it. That's essentially what the PG upgrade utility does as well. 
And so at postgrescourse.com in our full database administrator class, we show you how to use all of these different options. And we can answer any questions you have about that. In the meantime, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you want to contact me to uh, schedule a class, to ask any questions about database administration or for anything else regarding Postgres, go to postgrescourse.com, click contact us, fill out the form, and I'll reply promptly. Thanks for visiting.